Well, um, thank you very much, uh, first, uh, to CFS and Deutsche Bank. Um, on CFS side, Michael, Jan, Otmar, and of course, Sabine, as well as all those who served on the price committee, and uh, of course, Mr. Fitchin and, and others who are here from Deutsche Bank. Um, now, um, research is, is, is a very lonely pastime. I mean, there are many times you spend weeks in the office uh, wondering if uh, anybody in the world cares about what you're doing and what you're thinking about. Uh, and, and that's why it's very important to have partners in research who can share the joys of discovery and who are as enthusiastic about those arcane details as you are. Uh, and, and it's been my fortune to be blessed with great colleagues and mentors over my academic life. Uh, I should uh, start by mentioning people I've worked um, a tremendous amount with, Douglas Diamond, whom you just heard from, who's been uh, both a mentor as well as a colleague. All my theory I learned from Doug. Um, um, Mitch Peterson, who isn't here, but uh, who taught me how to do empirical work and, uh, and uh, also uh, has been a great colleague. And of course, Luigi Zingales, who's here and who, who's uh, uh, the soul of creativity. Just talking to him for an hour is such a pleasure. You, you, you travel across so many different uh, um, hills and vales as you, as you discuss anything ranging this afternoon from uh, Christian morality and, and the parables in, in the Bible uh, to uh, whether um, finance affects growth, which was one of our uh, major works together. Uh, there are others that I've, I've worked with and shared the pleasures of discovery with Viral Acharya, who's here, uh, Randy Krosner, Anil Kashyap, Stuart Myers, Jeremy Stein, who was, again, both a mentor uh, in fact, during my thesis, he was the only one who understood it. <laughs> Not because it was very deep, but because it was so badly written. Of course, uh, uh, Jeremy uh, has, is, is one of the sharpest individuals you'll come, come across, and uh, it's been fantastic uh, working first uh, with him as, the, as my advisor and then uh, as a co-author. Henri Cervez, who is in here, and Arvind Subramanian, with whom I did a... a a fair amount of work at the IMF on aid. And of course there are teachers and, and mentors along with, uh, with colleagues, uh, Stuart Myers, John Parsons, David Shafstein, uh, Don Lassard, and Oliver Hart during my thesis at, at MIT. And of course in the years since, Steve Kaplan, Andre Schleifer, and Rob Vishney. And of course Gene Farmer. Gene Farmer is, is somebody I've, I've never dared to have a a long conversation with for fear that he'd soon discover how stupid I was. Uh, but, but Gene is, 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 for anybody who's been at Chicago, the soul of, uh, um, uh, of uh, he, he's the ideal academic. Uh, a person who, uh, you know, at age 70 plus still goes every day to the office, uh, works on interesting problems, uh, doesn't really care what, uh, whether those are popular, not popular, uh, but is at it uh, day in and day out. And of course, uh, uh, apart from uh, um, f such splendid colleagues and teachers, there are the institutions. I was fortunate to go through my PhD at MIT at a time where it had, uh, and it still has, a very vibrant, very interesting faculty. We were disappointed that Bob Merton just left the year uh, before I, I, I joined, but I was, had the pleasure of taking his course at Harvard, of sitting through it. Uh, but there were many others at MIT. Uh, it's a great institution, and the economics department and finance group uh, are, are fantastic. But of course, also the University of Chicago, which is where I, I, I grew up. Uh, I do remember, and my wife will attest to this, the first day at the University of Chicago when I went in after being hired by the university, thinking I was, you know, uh, you know I, I never imagined getting a job there, but once I got the job, after the conversations with, uh, with Doug Diamond and so on, uh, I went in thinking I was on top of the world. I went in the first day. I tell you, this was the first thing that happened. I went to my mailbox. I saw a fat letter from the Journal of Political Economy. I opened it, and it was a rejection for my paper. Uh, <laughs> my, my job market paper on which 
basis, I think the University of Chicago hired me, had just been rejected by the Uni University of G Chicago Journal. Uh, and, and I said, <laughs> you know, what happened? <laughs> uh, uh, and I, I remember uh, telling my wife that someday I'll remember this and laugh at it. Well, today's the day. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, um, I uh, you know, as, as Doug mentioned, I was promoted early. And uh, I remember after being promoted, uh, George Constantinides, uh, one of my favorite colleagues there, said, now you have to prove our faith in you. Well, I hope, George, that after so many years, you finally think that your faith in me is, is proven. Uh, but uh, but it, uh, it has been a fascinating time uh, at the University of Chicago. Uh, you, let me, let me uh, end the, uh, uh, on uh, my, my, my words about the university to say that you have to be there to understand the, the focus, the degree to which ideas are prized. And, and ideas are uh, sort of separated from personalities. And this is where somebody like Jean comes in, uh, somebody who to this day reads the paper for the seminar, sits at the front row, uh, the seminar starts at 1.20 uh, or 1.30, depending on, on the season. Gene is there drumming uh, his fingers, waiting for the seminar to start. There's peace for five minutes. Uh, speakers today are allowed five, sometimes ten minutes, before the first question is asked. And then it's an intellectual feast, as everybody tries to tear into the paper. Uh, the, uh, at the university, if nobody asks you questions about the paper, uh, it's very disappointing because they're not interested. It's when they tear you to pieces that you should come away feeling really good because they are interested and, and they think the paper worth actually talking about. I've gone into every seminar at the university thinking I had a rock solid paper, um, presented many other places, uh, everything's been tried and tested, and I find I really did not know enough about my paper. There's a lot to be done and it's been very useful. I think that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, intellectual environment where it's all about the idea. If Gene comes in and gives a paper, you tear Gene to pieces. The uh, newest assistant professor has no problem telling Gene that he's wrong and he's, uh, uh, he's, uh, he, he's done shoddy work. Uh, it's not about Gene, it's not about his history of papers, it's about the latest paper. And I think that kind of, uh, of intellectual honesty, uh, which again, at the end of the seminar, nobody feels bad. It was about the idea, it wasn't about you. If the idea is not fully there, nobody says you can't do it. They're just saying, right now you're not there, go back, try again. And um, let me end by, by, by saying nobody uh, uh, you know, can uh, do uh, work without the support of their nearest and dearest, my loving and supporting wife, uh, Radhika, who's here, has been uh, a fellow traveler uh, on my intellectual journeys. She's uh, uh, been a very, very good editor of all the work that I do and uh, cleaned up my, my English, my diction, my, uh, my, uh, whether it's comprehensible. And of course, my two children who, who make uh, life worth living for uh, Nentara and Akhil, who could not be here and uh, uh, finally my parents who gave me uh, in some ways the love for reading for which, uh, which has been a support throughout my life. Well, thank you very much. Uh, again, it's an honor and a privilege to get this prize and uh, I look forward to the rest of these ceremonies. Thank you.